Okay, here you can see I have two containers. Um, this is uh, barium nitrate. It's about uh, four and a half, five pounds that I had um, in a bag that I purchased. And uh, what I've done is I've separated out these um, much more larger chunks from the rest of the um, smaller chunks and the powder that remains um, from that batch. Barium nitrate is one of those chem chemicals that uh, you really just don't want to expose yourself to. So this is uh, how I um, use the pyro shaker in order to prepare this to work with the composition. So um, what I want is I want to get this like any other um, oxidizer to a point where it's a 40 mesh or finer um, media in order to add to a composition. So I'm going to first take it and I'm separating out the larger chunks as I did and then I'm going to take the rest and I'm going to put it through a 20 mesh shaker and then I'm going to put it through a 40. So I wanted to demonstrate this so that you can see uh, the process. So the first thing I do is I have my 20 mesh shaker and I have a container. I have this in the, uh, in the other side with a lid on it and I'm going to just take that and uh, open it up. I'm going to screw the shaker on. I've disturbed no dust whatsoever in my workspace or around myself. And then I'm going to shake this through. And you can see immediately I start, I start getting uh, a fair amount of powder at 20 minutes. So let's go through that. you can see that I've separated a, a, about half of the material out in less than a minute. Um, this is minus 20 mesh and what remains is plus 20 mesh and there's still some pretty significant up to two inch size chunks in this container. But I'm still able to get more uh, material to pass the screen from this point forward. So I uh, stop, I let the dust settle, evaluate what I have and at this point I probably have enough for the uh, one pound batch of uh, star comp that I want to make or whatever so I might stop here but if I want to process all of it then I'll just go ahead and take a break I'll go work on something else and come back and then I'll finish shaking it through I also have a jar of media I have some lead um, lead balls here half inch lead balls and I also have some three-quarter inch uh, ceramic media that I might add to this mix to help pass the material through the screen. So I'll do that and I'll get this all to pass through and then I can store it um, for so it's in the ready for the next uh, process that I'm going to go through. When it comes to these larger pieces that are in this particular container here, I might uh, pulverize those um, with a, a wooden dowel or... Um, in any other way that I find that uh, I can do in an open space where I have ventilation and um, I'm outdoors and I'm not going to expose myself to that. Um, but as far as being able to get this material ready for use, this is the best way to do it. see that I've passed all that material through the uh, screen and it's in the uh, bottom container. I've, I've been able to do two-thirds of that material in about a minute and a half and um, I've absolutely no physical exposure to
to myself or my environment uh, with the pyro shaker. Now, if I want to then further process this, I will take the screen off the top. There's still a fair amount of powder in there, but I'll, I'll carefully take the screen off the top with the remaining material and set it aside. And now I'll take my 40 mesh and a, and a clean container and I'll place that on top. Screw that down nice and tight. And now I'll turn that over and now I can further process this this way as you can see quickly moving um, down through a 40 mesh screen which is the size uh, particle size that I really want when um, I'm mixing the color composition or whatever it is that I'm going to make with this. So now I use the 20 mesh. It's always easier to start with a uh, fine, uh, a coarser mesh screen first and run the material through that and then step to a uh, the next size down. And you can see that in this particular case I'm able to move that material through. Shaking it back and forth, um, sometimes swirling it, sometimes banging it with my hand. Um, any of those processes in order to get that material to completely pass the screen. Now you will get to the point and you can listen to it now and hear it sounds like sand where moments ago there was no sound at all. So what's happened is I was able to pass anything that was finer than 40 mesh through the screen and anything bigger than 40 mesh is remaining on top. So this is more of a powder and what's left on top is more of a grain. It's more granular and it's not going to pass that screen. And that's the material that we really don't want in our composition because the uh, size, the grain size of that material isn't conducive for a good um, homogeneous mix in our composition. And down here, 40 mesh or less, is uh, exactly what we want to use. So now we've passed it through we fluffed it up. We've gotten it. Um, we've gotten it separated from all the larger particles, and this material here is perfect for uh, going straight to our composition. And we know that when we start mixing that in our composition, that we're not going to have any problems with particle sizes and that kind of stuff. The rest of the stuff that's left up here, now we can take that either to a ball mill or to a small grinder and we can grind that material and pulverize it so that it becomes more like the material here. But So you can see we now have our large chunks, we have our granular which is more like uh, table salt or, or sugar, and then we have our powder which is like talc. So the talc is what we're looking for in our composition. So at this point um, I can see I'm not passing any more of that granular it doesn't want to go through the screen and so we've gotten the maximum amount of, uh, of uh, process that we can so we have a material that's ready to work. So really we've gone from a mechanical separation of the large chunks from the, the batch that we received. Um, we've then shaken it through a 20 mesh shaker which has separated the larger chunks from the overall powder and then we've taken the powder and we've separated it from the sandy grain to the talc. And that's what we're looking for in our composition. So you can see the pyro shaker um, is uh, really a good tool to use in chemical preparation prior to mixing a composition. And that's uh, barium nitrate. Totally isolated. There's no dust here on the table. There's none in the air, there's none on my clothes, there's none on my hands. It's completely self-contained. Now I did have this media out here and if I wanted to, I could have thrown a couple pieces in with the larger chunks to help break those up and process more of this because a lot of this that's still in chunks in these larger chunks, there's a lot of powder still in that. It's just been compressed in a container for a long period of time and it needs to be broken up. But um, there's also a lot of sandy grain. And that sandy grain is what we're really trying to separate from our powder as well as breaking up those chunks. So if I really wanted to, I could take this 20 mesh here 
and throw in a couple of the ceramic media with it and uh, continue to shake that and it would help pulverize it and probably reduce that by at least half or three quarters to uh, make that usable powder. But uh, that's where we're at with it. That's the pyro shaker using the 20 and 40 mesh screen in order to prep a particular oxidizer and uh, ready it for a composition mix.